what's going on ig family let me post my pen my title here we go and pin it so y'all know what we are talking about today what's going on i am live in two places in my private facebook group okay and on instagram so if y'all see me looking here there everywhere that's because i am live in a few places so what's going on y'all happy thursday welcome to another session of hashtag tbtt which is tax boss talk thursday have y'all missed me because i know i used to show up every thursday but i took a little break i did because i can I'm not going to sit up here and give y'all any type of excuses, okay? I took a break, but we're back. So, you can probably see me more than Thursdays live, but if all else fails, come see me Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, for sure on Instagram and in this um, Mind Your Tax Business group, Okay. Um, because I'll just be sharing all of the information. So each and every Thursday, y'all can catch me here. We talk all things tax business related, tax business related. And that doesn't stop with what we are going to be talking about for today's topic. Okay. So before I even get into it, because clearly if y'all know how, if y'all used to watch my videos and my lives before, y'all know I'm like 10 minutes into what I'm talking about before I even introduce myself. So let me stop, rewind, and go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Tatiani Favors. I am a tax business coach, which is just a fancy way of saying I am a business coach for tax professionals. I've been in the taxation industry for 18 years. However, for the past eight years, I have been working in the capacity of a coach, of a business coach. And what I do is I help individuals start, build, and scale profitable tax businesses, okay? And I do that via coaching mainly, mainly with my online school, Tax Boss Academy, and now with my newest membership, which is called the Mind Your Tax Biz Membership. Okay, mind your tax biz membership. And just a quick thing about that because I am still accepting founding members, okay, which means that you actually get to join this membership at a discounted rate. And the main goal for this membership is to provide clarity, okay, is to provide clarity to the members that join. Now, clarity in mainly two ways, okay. One, and some of the people who have joined, um, they actually don't even know if they really want to get into the taxation industry, okay? They don't know if they want to get into the taxation industry. They don't know enough about it. So the membership provides clarity, okay? It provides clarity on what the taxation industry is as a whole. So you can make an informed decision if this is even something you want to be a part of and what starting and growing the tax business will look like for you and for your lifestyle and how it even fits in in all of that right so a lot of people need clarity on if this is even the vehicle they want to use to create an additional stream of income so the membership provides that clarity another type of clarity are in another type of person who has been joining the membership they already have been preparing taxes they already have their tax business but they're not sure how they want to proceed they're not clear they don't have the clarity on their next step okay mainly because they don't know what the options are okay it's very difficult to make an informed decision about anything if you are unaware of what your options are, okay? And so within the Mind Your Tax Biz membership, we focus heavily on giving you the information, providing you the information on not only what your options are, but once you choose a path, giving you the steps to get to where you're trying to get to, okay? And that starts with things like today. You know, that does not negate today and today's topic. We're going to get into the types of businesses in the taxation industry. Hey, everyone coming in on Facebook and on IG. 
Um, we're going to get into the types of businesses within the taxation industry. Now, why am I talking about this? I was going to say this was for my newer people, okay? Because you might not know what your options are. But what I've noticed is even the people who have a tax business, okay, have a tax preparation business, they still don't know what all of the options are within this industry, okay? Within this industry, within the taxation industry, there are multiple types of businesses. A tax preparation business is not the only option you have if you decide to enter into the tax industry. And today, we're going to break down a few of those tax business options for you so you can understand what your options are so you can understand okay if i start with a tax business i can go here or actually i don't even want to start with a tax business i want to start in another aspect of the taxation industry okay there is no wrong answer or right answer it's only what you want to do as the entrepreneur as the business owner okay so let's go ahead and get into it i think i have six different types of businesses to go over tonight of course if you have any questions um facebook write in the comments ig there's a question bubble down at the bottom right side of your screen go ahead and ask your questions because i'll be answering questions today as well right so the first type of business i want to discuss in the taxation industry is of course the tax preparation business okay tax preparation business now that is the most popular and that's typically pe that's typically the introduction to how people start in the taxation industry I want to stress again that it's not the only, it is not the only, let me see, y'all can't hear me, let me turn this up, it's not the only type of business, but it is the most, um, it, it is the, the most common. This is where most people start, and for a lot of you all, you think that tax preparation business is the only type of business in the taxation industry, and of course, today we're learning that it is not, okay? So, a tax prep business is, of course, a business that offers tax preparation services, okay? They offer tax preparation, pre preparation services to individuals, to small businesses, to nonprofits, other organizations, okay? So, that is their primary function. They offer tax preparation services to businesses, okay? And nonprofits, organizations, and individuals. Most of you all probably offer tax prep um, services to individuals, but there are a plethora of different types of tax preparation services depending on your experience, your knowledge, things of that nature, okay? Now, if you are running a tax preparation business, you may offer additional services like tax planning, bookkeeping, accounting, things of that nature. Now, I'll probably, this will probably be a different um, live that I do, talking about additional services, right? Hey, everyone coming in, talking about additional services. And what's the most opportune time to, you know, offer additional services? Should you offer additional services attached to your tax preparation uh, business, so forth and so on? We're not really going to get into that today. But if you have a tax preparation business, you have the opportunity to offer other services. Now, I want to draw a very clear distinction between tax planning, okay? Because like I said, you can offer an additional service like tax planning underneath your tax preparation business, right? And that kind of leads me into the second type of business within the taxation industry. So let's go ahead and talk about that now so I can make this um, distinction between where I'm going with this. So we have tax preparation business. Okay, we know that that's an option. The second, types of, the second type of business, rather, that you can involve yourself in in the taxation industry is tax consulting business a tax consulting business right now this type of firm offers 
a range of tax related consulting services to businesses and individuals all right so this includes things like tax planning tax compliance and strategy development i feel like i have to sneeze but it just will not come have y'all ever had that like uh but whatever but it's i've had it for the past at least two minutes like this sneeze that just won't come but whatever anyway so tax consulting services includes tax planning tax compliance and strategy development right things of that nature now i do not want you all to confuse tax planning okay tax planning with what you do with your tax clients in your tax preparation business when you give them certain advice like you should alter the number of exemptions that you're claiming on your w-4 or you should pay estimated payments if you're self-employed that is not tax planning tax planning is an entire um it's an entire service it's an entire business tax planning itself is a, an elevated understanding of the irc it's an elevated understanding of the internal revenue code the loopholes in the irc okay the strategies and the understanding of the different of the various types of legal entities and people's personal tax circumstances to help them actually plan for the upcoming year for the upcoming five years whatever you giving advice and suggestions to your tax paying clients in your tax preparation business after you have prepared their tax return like you should pay estimated payments or you should um have more or you should claim less exemptions on your w-4s that is not tax planning and i'm tired of seeing it i'm not gonna lie to y'all okay because y'all say oh yeah y'all have one your little social media flyers and on your business cards tax preparation tax planning but you don't offer tax planning all you're doing is being a good tax professional and being a good tax preparer and doing what you should do your due diligence and offering your client the best advice and suggestions that you can that is 100 percent different from tax planning so let's get into what tax planning really is tax planning is like i said a consulting service people pay consultants tax consultants four and five figures for tax planning mainly people with a lot of money or different streams of income that are actually streaming and for sure companies will pay a tax consultant to plan their year because taxes just doesn't happen okay taxes can be planned you can intentionally do things purposefully throughout the year to create whatever your tax circumstances is when it's time to file your taxes yeah you can and you do that when you decide to plan your taxes so i don't want y'all to get given advice and suggestions to your clients with tax planning okay that's a consultant service also what's also included under the tax consulting service is compliance okay compliance this is mainly for companies i see this mainly with companies each legal business entity has a separate a set of rules and regulations that you have to abide by so whether you're a c corp an s corp a partnership they all have requirements that you have to abide by and larger companies mid-sized to larger companies even some small businesses okay they have they want to make sure they are in compliance why because if you are ever found out of compliance the irs or even the state can fine you they can penalize you okay we need cpa to provide planning for our clients yeah you could you could 
Oh, is that your? Let me see. Is that your? Is that an actual person or are you talking to an AI bot? I just, I just want to know for my personal, personal reasons. But anyway, um, so they want to stay in compliance. And as a tax consultant, you have to know the different requirements for the different types of business entities. So here are some real light examples. Say you have a client who is a C Corp. Okay, especially if a person is a C Corp, there are certain compliance, uh, there are certain things that they have to comply with. Typically, if someone wants to take their company public, meaning they are being traded on the stock market, okay, they have to become a C Corp. A C Corp is the only business entity you can be if you're on the stock market, okay? There are certain compliance milestones that you have to abide by. So the company will want to know what those things are so they can check those things off. If you are an S corporation, or even if you have elected to be taxed as an S corporation, okay, you have to abide by those set of rules that are put out for an S corp. Yes, you've eliminated self-employment taxes on your individual side, but the IRS says, okay, if you're an S corp, you have to have a board of directors. You have to pay yourself a reasonable salary, okay? And you have to have um, you have to have meetings and keep minutes. Those are just a couple of things that are required if you are an S corp. If you don't have certain, and all tax preparers don't know that they should, if they're a good one, in my opinion. However. Some people have tax consulting businesses that they will pay four and five figures to to make sure they're in compliance, to make sure that they have the strategy and planning in place, especially your companies. They want to plan for the next year. They want to plan for next year. They want to plan for the next five years because that goes into their budget, that goes into their planning and their business plan and all of that. People pay top-notch money for tax consulting services. That's why it's in a whole different lane of, of its own. If you're interested in something like that, then you should look into tax consulting services. Now, I will say, <clears throat> excuse me, again, you will have to have an elevated knowledge of the Internal Revenue Code, which is aka IRC, and understand all of these different aspects, not just tax preparation, okay? So that's tax consulting services. And again, if you're not providing that level of tax planning, then you take that off your business card that you be tax planning. All you're doing is tax preparation. Do not lead these people astray just because you want uh, so many services on your business card or on your bio or whatever. Don't lie to your clients. Okay, like just just don't do it. It's it never ends well. Okay, and when someone pulls your card, you're gonna look real crazy out here in these social media streets. Is all I'm saying. Is all I'm saying. Okay, um, the third type of tax business that is in the taxation industry, and I'm actually gonna group these three together, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So I'm grouping these three together. So you have tax attorneys. CPAs, which is Certified Public Accountants, and you have EAs, which is Enrolled Agents. I'm grouping them together, but I will briefly talk about them individually so you'll just know what they are. So, of course, a tax attorney is a, a, is a lawyer, excuse me, that specializes in tax law. And they provide legal advice and representation for clients in tax-related mat matters, right? That's what tax attorneys do. CPAs are licensed professionals who provide, they can provide actually a variety of tax services, okay, of tax related services. So they could be a tax, they could provide tax preparation. Not all of them do. That's the thing. Just because you find a CPA does not mean they provide tax prep services, does not mean they provide tax planning, but they can, does not mean they provide auditing and consulting, but they can, okay. But they may, but you know for sure they provide accounting, <laughs> okay? 
And then you have EAs, enrolled agents, which is the new kids on the block, okay? And they are licensed tax professionals who specialize in tax preparation and representation. Now, why am I grouping tax attorneys, EAs, and CPAs into one type of group? I'm grouping them because in order to offer tax resolution, Okay, if you want to get into the tax res game, which is short for tax resolution, tax resolution are your audits. Okay, if you want to represent a client in the event that they are audited, whether it's a state audit or a federal audit, because you can have a state or federal audit. A lot of people don't know that as well. You can be audited by your state or you can be audited federally. And if you're super lucky, you can be audited by both. But typically, you know, it's one or the other, right? If you get into the tax resolution game, which is a fantastic game, and it's very lucrative, you have to have now, you have to have certain representation rights. Back in the day when I was doing it, back in my day, y'all see these grays, okay? Y'all see these grays, <laughs> But back in my day, you didn't need to have a designation to, um, in order to represent a client in a state or federal audit. Back in my day, it was good enough if you prepared the tax return. If you prepared the tax return, that gave you, that qualified you to actually represent this client in front of an IRS agent or a state agent, right? But now that's not the case anymore. You have to be an attorney, an EA, or a CPA. Now, of course, if you are an attorney, you got to go to law school and you have to pass an exam. If you are a CPA, you have to go to a secondary college, okay, secondary education to get those credits and, of course, pass an exam, okay? And then the EA is the new kid on the block where you don't have to have formal education, but you do have to take some classes so you can pass the exam, right? And so you have to be one of those designations in order to represent a client in the event of an audit. Now, I will say that, okay, let me rewind. So you have to have one of those in order to, to represent a client, right? Let's talk about EA for a second because over the years, people have come to me. They're like, I'm getting my EA, which is great. If that's what you want to do, if you want to, you know, spend money to study and then take the, it's either a three or four part test, then great. But here's my two cents. Here's my suggestion. A lot of people come to me and say, I want to get an EA so people can take me more seriously and so I can get more clients. No, 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 that's not a thing. That is not a thing. When people are coming to you for tax preparation, they don't act, the normal person isn't going to ask you, are you an EA? Because first of all, they don't know what an EA is because it's a new des designation. Half of the people in this industry already don't know what the EA is versus the person who isn't even in this industry who just needs their taxes prepared. They're not asking you that, okay? So the fact that you're getting your EA, spending this money, spending this time to get an EA because you think that's going to guarantee you tax clients is 100% wrong. It's 100% big. <laughs> it has no validity. It has no validity at all, okay? Quick story. I have my degree in accounting, okay? I have my bachelor's degree in accounting, okay? I graduated from the real HU, Hampton University, and I actually have my degree in accounting. So when I was working in my business, in my tax and accounting business, I don't think any of my clients knew that I actually was very qualified to be standing in front of them, you know, taking over their books and all of that. They never asked me if I had my accountant's degree, all of my accounting clients. They never asked me if I had an accounting degree. They never asked me if I had any type of degree. They never asked me if I graduated high school. They don't care about none of that. In the real world, all people care about is when they approach you, Okay, when they approach you 
and you have that consultation with this person and 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 you have a consultation with that person all they care about is how you can help their business how you can help them and if you sound like you know what you're talking about and if you can do the job that they need to be done okay if you can even teach them something during the consultation to make them feel even more comfortable with you and your company even better you're hired okay so you don't need an EA to get more clients. I know a lot of broke attorneys, broke CPAs, and broke EAs. Because they probably thought that their designations in these letters would help them get more clients. And it just simply doesn't. Nothing is guaranteed without you having to put in some type of effort behind it, right? So, unless you want to represent your clients in tax resolution and in state and federal audits, then I wouldn't suggest you spend time and money getting your EA if you just want a tax preparation business, okay? Now, if you do want to represent your clients and you do want to get into tax res, because I always say that tax res is a five-figure situation. No client should be coming to you for tax res for under $10,000, period, point blank. Because back in my day when I was in tax resolution, and I loved it too, like I loved it. It is very time consuming. And by the time people come to you with tax resolution, they're desperate. So either you get your, either you get a lien put on your house, your car, your bank account, okay? Or you pay me this here money so I can negotiate on your behalf with the state or federal so they won't go into your bank account and just get all the money that you owe them. So they won't put a lien on your house. So they won't put a lien on your car. Okay, $10,000 minimum, five figures minimum, okay, for tax res. So it is a very lucrative type of business in the taxation industry for sure, right? For sure. So if you want to get into that, then okay, go ahead and do the EA route. Also, also though, I encourage you to think about this too. And this again, this is what you'll be getting in your mind, your tax biz membership, clarity. If you want to offer tax resolution in your company, or you even want, either you want a tax resolution company, or you want to offer it as an additional service in your company, then you have to understand, are you going to be the person Who's going to actually do the work? Are you going to be the person to actually put the binders together and negotiate with the with the state representative or the federal representative on your client's behalf? Or do you want to simply offer that service? That's something that everyone has to understand when you are either starting a business in the tax industry or adding additional services to your tax prep business. Are you going to be the person to actually fulfill that service or do you want to hire someone with that skill set? That's a, again, there is no right or wrong answer, but that's something that you need to know in the beginning so you can add it to your plan, okay? So you can not only add it to your plan, but so you can start working towards that. And so because if you have to hire someone then you need some revenue, then you need to really do what you need to do to get your clientele up, to get your business revenue up so you can afford payroll now so you can hire. OK, and if you want to do it yourself, then, you know, go through the EA and do all of that if you're not a CPA or an attorney. OK, let's go ahead and get with the fifth. Yes, I think this is the fifth type of business that you can get involved in in the taxation industry. Bookkeeping and accounting business, okay? Bookkeeping and accounting business. Now, they offer, again, a range of financial and accounting services. It could include uh, bookkeeping, payroll processing, and other financial statement preparation. You have balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flows, things of that nature, right? Also, tax planning and tax preparation could be additional services that a bookkeeper and an accountant firm will offer. 
It doesn't have to be, but it can be. Just like with all of these things, like I said before, you can either add some additional services or you can just specialize in that one thing, accounting and bookkeeping. I don't have to go deep into that because everyone really knows what accounting and bookkeeping is, but I will say that accounting and bookkeeping are used interchangeably a lot, like um, self-employed and business owner are used interchangeably, but they're very different. Okay, bookkeeping is probably what many of you are talking about, and that's probably 90 to 95 percent of what companies are looking for at a certain level. Accounting services, though, is a little bit more than bookkeeping. If you are someone's accountant, then you are really providing budgets and strategy for this person. You typically have access to their accounts and you're paying their bills on their behalf. You're paying their taxes and all of that on their behalf. You might be running a processing payroll and things of that nature. You have another level of access for this person. Like um, if we think about it, a small business might have a bookkeeper to just keep the books, you know, provide income and um, like uh, profit and loss statements every month. But someone like Dr. Dre or someone, I don't know why he popped in my head, but uh, uh, but someone like a millionaire, Oprah, she doesn't just have a bookkeeper. She definitely has an accountant. OK, to really and, 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 and whether that is a company that provides accounting services and a few of these other things, but a strategy involved and they have a certain level of access to where they can handle that person's financial um, business endeavors and, and, and services. OK, it's it's a little deeper. You have to know a little more and it goes beyond bookkeeping. OK. Anyone could be a bookkeeper, but not everyone could be an accountant unless you have a degree or you have studied for accountancy. It's much easier to just learn how to do bookkeeping versus accounting. So again, like a lot of you all have tax planning on your business cards and you're just giving advice and suggestions. A lot of you have accounting services, but you don't really provide accounting services. It's really bookkeeping. And that's okay. Just keep it at bookkeeping because people pay top notch for that service as well. Okay. So don't even trip about that. Um, and so the sixth, I think, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what number we're on anymore. But the next type of business is software providers. Okay. Software and technology providers. Okay. These businesses develop and or sell software and technology solutions for tax preparation, for tax preparers, for bookkeepers, for accountants, okay? The most popular rendition of this are your service bureaus. Typically, service bureaus will resell tax software. But that can also be the case for accounting and bookkeeping and things of that nature. So service bureau now is like the new kid on the block and is very popular. So a lot of people want to get into the service bureau game, but they don't really know what that game entails, what it looks like. And they it's the quickest way to take advantage of tax professionals. And it's real sad out here, but it, it really happens. It's more involved than what people care or think it is and that's why it's so easy to take advantage of people because you really have to set things up in the background in order to run that business compliance you want to be in compliance but also you want to make sure that morality morale is high in that type of business because it's so easy to steal other people's money it's so, e I mean, not for me, but it's easy for y'all to do it because a lot of y'all are out here stunting with other people's money. You're out here not giving your their preparers the money that they've earned from the fees that they charge for the um, software. It's a cold game out here, but that is an option and it can be very lucrative for you legally because anything could be lucrative if you if you try it illegally, but legally it can be very lucrative for you, okay? Um, but you just have to understand how to properly navigate that type of company, okay? 
So those are the companies that we're going to talk about or the types of businesses that you can start in the tax industry. I'm going to repeat them real quick and then see if I have any questions. So in types of businesses in the tax industry, number one, a tax preparation business. Number two, a tax resolution business. Okay. Um, number three, bookkeeping and accounting services. Okay. Number four, a tax consulting business. Number five, software and technology providers, okay, aka service bureaus, okay? And then for an honorable mention, you can have a franchise. So you can start an H&R blog, a, a Liberty Tag service, you know, you can start an actual franchise, but those are typically tax preparation businesses. They could be accounting businesses as well, but we mainly see it with the tax preparation business sector um, when someone starts to create a franchise, okay? So those are what those are your different options when it comes to what you want to do in the taxation industry. It's not all just tax preparation. You have other options, okay? And, the, and these are it. We just went over them. Um, again, if you have not joined the new my new membership, Mind Your Tax Biz membership, you can go to taxbizmembership.com or click the link in my bio. Facebook, I will put the link underneath this video once it posts. Okay, if you want to learn more about it, if you have any questions about it, y'all feel free to DM me. And I must say, explain things great because I just see comments. I just see comments and and not questions. So that's funny. Yes, you explained everything well. Well, fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, y'all. I will definitely for sure see y'all next Thursday for another session of hashtag TBTT Tax Boss Talk Thursdays. But I'll probably see y'all before then to give y'all some more game about the tax biz industry, okay? So I'll see y'all later. Peace.